Welcome to Chapter 1, Episode 5. In the last episode, we discussed a study from the Yale School of Medicine that looked at patients with schizophrenia alongside Claire audience psychics. Both groups hear voices, but only the patients found them distressing. We learned that one of the most powerful predictors as to whether a voice hearer would have a healthy relationship with their voices, that is, whether they would hear benevolent or malevolent voices, was the reaction they got from others upon first revealing that they heard voices. Today, we're going to see many of these themes reflected in the story of a woman named Eleanor Longden. And I'm going to let you know right now that this story has a happy ending. <laughs> In 2013, Longden delivered a talk called The Voices in My Head, which if you haven't seen it, it's pretty incredible. Honestly, you should just pause my jank ass video right now and go watch hers. No, but seriously, I'll wait. Okay, so hopefully you watched her video, but no worries if not, as we'll be discussing it alongside an interview she did with The Guardian where she goes a bit more in depth. Now, nothing I can say will do her story justice, which is why I'll be quoting her throughout. But I wanted to do my own video to point out all the ways in which her story ties into everything that we've talked about in previous episodes. Some background for those who aren't familiar. Longden first began hearing what she calls the voice during her freshman year of college. It started off benign, simply narrating what she was doing, until she made what she calls a fundamental mistake and told her roommate, who freaked out, made her see a doctor, who freaked out, sent her to a psychiatrist who, surprise, surprise, totally freaked out. In Longden's words, the psychiatrist took a grim view of the voice's presence, subsequently interpreting everything I said through a lens of latent insanity. Longden recounts an instance in which she, as a member of the student-run news organization on campus, had to leave her psychiatrist's office early to go read the news. She later learns that her psychiatrist wrote down in her medical records that Eleanor suffers delusions that she's a television news broadcaster. And this is not at all uncommon. In fact, if someone who has been labeled psychotic claims that they are not psychotic, known as anosognosia or lack of insight, this will be taken as further proof that they are indeed very psychotic. How absurd is that? Okay, back to our story. Longden ultimately winds up in the hospital where she receives a diagnosis of schizophrenia. She describes it thus, having been encouraged to see the voice not as an experience, but as a symptom, my fear and resistance towards it intensified. In turn, this caused the number of voices to increase and grow progressively hostile and menacing. In effect, a vicious cycle of fear, avoidance, mistrust, and misunderstanding had been established. If you thought, wait a minute, that mirrors everything we talked about in the last episode, you would be right. Resisting one's voices seems to make them more hostile and threatening. Also, I know I sound like a broken record here, but feedback loops, feedback loops, feedback loops. That's exactly what she's describing here. That culturally reinforced negative reaction to voice hearing seems to create a self-fulfilling prophecy in the person who hears voices. And behind this self-fulfilling prophecy is a fatalistic attitude that many in the medical profession have with regard to schizophrenia. At one point, Longden's psychiatrist even tells her that she'd be better off with cancer, because at least cancer is easier to cure than schizophrenia. How messed up is that? How is one expected to break out of this vicious cycle if they're being told they're never going to recover? They're not. They're not expected to break out of it. They're not expected to recover. But Longden does. How does she do it? In her words, I was very fortunate to have people who never gave up on me. Relationships that really honored my resilience my worth and humanity, and my capacity to heal. Okay, that's the first step. People who, in her words, empowered her to save herself. Another critical step was when she got involved with the UK Hearing Voices Network, which helped her to realize that my voices were a meaningful response to traumatic life events, particularly childhood events, and as such, were not my enemies, but a source of insight into solvable emotional problems. In the Guardian article, Longden quotes Marius Rome, one of the co-founders of the Hearing Voices Network, who said that voices are messengers that carry important messages about genuine problems in the person's life. This was a crucial step in her healing when she learned to see my voices as meaningful, messages and metaphors about emotional problems in my life. By not taking what the voices were saying literally, but instead understanding them symbolically, metaphorically, Longden was able to extract meaning from them. This struck me as very similar to dream interpretation, 
which is something I hope to talk about in later episodes, as I view dreams, like voices, as originating in the psychic realm. But that's a whole other conversation, so let's stick with Longden. Through working with the Hearing Voices Network, Longden comes to understand that the voices took the place of overwhelming pain and gave words to it. Memories of sexual trauma and abuse, rage, shame, loss, guilt, and low self-worth. Probably the most important insight was when I realized that the most menacing, aggressive voices actually represented the parts of me that had been hurt the most. And as such, it was these voices that needed to be shown the greatest compassion and care, which of course ultimately represented learning to show compassion, love, and acceptance towards myself. Psychologists have long known that there's a link between childhood trauma and hearing voices, but I've never heard anyone express it as clearly and eloquently as Longden does here. What's so interesting is that once she began to understand her voices symbolically, she realizes that they're ultimately trying to help her, to guide her, which again is very similar to what we saw in episode three with the folks from India and Ghana. When Longden is asked in the Guardian interview if she can remember when the voices started to become nicer, she describes it as a complex process that happened gradually, but points out one particularly powerful moment where she said to the voices, you represent awful things that have happened to me and have carried all the memories and emotion because I couldn't bear to acknowledge them myself. All I've done in return is criticize and attack you. It must have been really hard to be so vilified and misunderstood. There was an immensely long pause before one of them finally responded, yes, thank you. Longden's story shows us that schizophrenia doesn't have to be a terminal illness, as she ends up going back to school and graduating at the top of her class with a master's in psychology. Worth noting is that while she was taking her final exam, one of her voices began to dictate the answers to her. And guess what? He got them right. Eleanor Longden has since gotten her PhD and is currently a leader in the Hearing Voices Network. She now has a much more positive relationship with her voices, and they even cheered her on for her TED Talk and prompted her with lines when she was worried she was going to forget what to say next. See, I told you this story has a happy ending. In the next episode, we're going to dive into the past and take a look at some famous voice hearers throughout history, and we're going to do so through the lens of a theme that has begun to emerge in this chapter. That'll wrap up our discussion on hearing voices, at least for the time being. And while this chapter looked at something typically considered negative and shown a positive light on it, in the next chapter, we'll be taking a look at something widely regarded as positive and talking about a bit of a darker side to it that you may not be aware of. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.